other big issue too is, and we don't look at it as much as we should, although some of us do, China. China is actually slowing down. Yeah. It, it was locked down for a long time uh, for, for COVID. It reopened late last year. They had a burst of growth in the first part of 2023. They're now slowing again. And they've got really bad demographics. They've got actually population falling. And so what that means is that the construction sector is weak. We're seeing it in commodity prices coming down. And Chinese inflation is zero. Yeah, unlike the rest of us are fighting inflation, they've got no inflation. They're cutting interest rates in China. And for the Western world, we import goods, manufactured goods, you know, electronics and clothing and all this other stuff from China or whatever. And if they've got low or zero inflation there, they're going to be exporting that to Australia. In fact, when we look at our most recent inflation data here, you can see things like household furniture and things like that. Prices are actually coming down. They fell only at you know, 0.2%, 0.3%. But we're starting to see the early stages of that disinflation in China, the slowing inflation in the US, impacting our economy. And that's why when our inflation number came out uh, uh, earlier this week, it was a good result. It was lower than market expected. At 6%. Correct. So, so how much, how important is it in any thesis around what's going to happen with inflation in Australia and therefore what's going to happen with the interest rates in, in Australia in the future. In any thesis, how important is the imported inflation in the argument? In other words, what we're importing from the US, what we import from – we don't import much from Europe or the, U, or the UK, to be frank. It's mostly China and the US. Yep. So they're both heading in the right direction. In fact, China looks a bit scary in some respects. A little it looks bit, like yes. it's going to the yeah. Japanese level, which, yeah. you know, we don't want. But no. from our point of view here, sitting here in this country, it's not a bad thing for us if we can import stuff cheaper Correct. over time. Correct. If, if we can get those goods that are manufactured in China, a lot of the electronic goods are like the tech stuff that we get from the US and machinery and equipment, that like sort of high-tech stuff. And also raw uh, materials. Oh, the uh, indeed, indeed. And well, we had Bill sitting here talking about <laughs> the, the cost of timber and things like that for yes. building and construction. Correct. Big deal. It's a big deal. And even like oil price, the global oil price. And see, that's something that's driven by not even the US or China as such. You know, it's it's, a, it's the output from the Middle East and other countries as well. So, uh, and even though the oil price has kicked up a bit the last week or two, it's still way down on where it was 18 months ago. Remember, we got to 120 yep. US dollars a barrel. It's now about 80. It got to 70 a bit before, so it's up 10 bucks a barrel, but whatever. But it's not, it's still lower than it was. So all that news from the global economy filters in to what we are paying at the petrol pump, what we're paying in the supermarket, what we're paying for it. You know, the big retailers when we buy clothing and furniture and electronic goods. We, it, and in that June quarter CPI that came out, we saw the first hints of it. Like all, all economists, I'd love to see the next few quarters of data. My hunch is that we're going to see very weak results on those items in the inflation basket, and that's why inflation is going to keep falling. <laughs> 